this place, community. You know, I, I see I see a, a vision of of a new a new world the way we want to have it be, where people do care about each other. And we can have we have a community, and we, you know, I just feel a lot of love here. Welcome to Sawatch County Stories, a podcast of the Northern Sawatch County Library District, where we explore the evolution and history of the land and people of the Northern San Luis Valley of Colorado. I'm Sarah Kane Fry, Director of the Northern Sawatch County Library District. In this episode, local resident Alana Godwin shares her story on the theme of finding home. In our Finding Home series, folks talk about their housing journey in the San Luis Valley. My name is Alana Godwin, and I live in Casita Park. I'm 70 years old. How I got here is just a total miracle. Um, I was living in California, and I was living there for a long, long time. And after 2008, my life started getting really hard, not being able to get enough money to pay rent, and I was working, and um, up until 2008, I was pretty doing pretty good. I wasn't wealthy, but um, so in the end, before I came to Colorado, I was essentially homeless, and I got a, um, a little uh, inheritance from my mom, and I chose to go to Ireland, and my, my idea was that I'd get a one-way ticket and go to Ireland and have a little bit of money and I would uh, find somebody to hire me, you know, to sponsor me to live there. Well, I went to get on the plane in Los Angeles and they went, let me get on the airplane without buying a return ticket for the grand total of $2,224. And that wiped out my my money that I was going to be using to uh travel around Ireland after I went on the tour and find a, a place to live. I Before I left California, I had to let go of all my belongings, and I got a crate uh, packed up, a shipping, a nice shipping crate with some of, just a few things that, I'm, uh, that I really care for. A lot of it was clothes. Um, that's me. And um, so I went to Ireland and got the, the return ticket, and um, it kind of put a, a bit of a crunch on my, my tour because you know, I felt really sad that I was going to have to come back to the United States. And I couldn't do that thing of, of finding a place to live in Ireland and live there. I found out that you really can't use, leave the United States without having a real good income, over $50,000 a year, and or an address where you're going. And um, I didn't have either, so... I came back and I ended up um, going to my cousins in Texas and I got very, very despondent because when I don't have a place to live and I don't know what I'm going to be doing, I really, it's a tailspin down to the depression. I was crying and I heard, I heard spirit tell me, get out of bed and sit and meditate and I'll tell you what to do. And it was like really clear and so I did. And I was reminded that I had an acquaintance from California here at the UFO Tower. And she did the B&B behind the UFO Tower. So, to make a longer story shorter, I um, got a rental car. And I came out here from Texas. It's hard to get to this place with just, you know, there aren't buses that come here. And there aren't trains that come here. And... um, so I came, and I within 15 minutes I was hired to, to clean out a mobile home, a, a um, mobile home, three bedroom mobile home with five feet deep of trash, and I did it. I did it all by myself, and I sanitized the place, and I did my room first, which was smart. I was brought here. It wasn't like I sat down and, and once I, my whole idea of Ireland was gone. Um, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to go. I don't. I don't have a lot of money. Um, it was even before Social Security kicked in for me that that I. Um, well, no, Social Security had kicked in, but that's still not a lot of money. 
first of all, when I was down in the valley, um, I was by myself, and I don't do well by myself. So I went online and I looked for um, either a Unity to go to or Signs Online. And there was, of course, the closest one is Colorado Springs, and I couldn't see me driving there. And I really was trying to figure out how to make friends, you know, how to create a life. And um, so I saw the Sri Aurobindo Learning Center up here. And because I was a science of mind, I am a science of mind practitioner, uh, we had studied about Aurobindo. And uh, Ernest Holmes just loved Aurobindo Ar and all the uh, mil uh, Far Eastern, uh, uh, so I, I call it spiritual practices. So I came up here. And at first I found a community and I could come up here. And the first time I drove up T Road, I started crying. I was so moved by the mountains and so moved by being here. Just It just amazed me. And I, I, I've done this before where I go someplace and I can just feel in my heart that I need to be there. And eventually I did make it up here and I have gone through some interesting housing situations. It seems like that's my theme of my life is find home. And um, I've been a caregiver and a home health aide um, since 76. And I just have this thing about um, being loving and caring for people. And um, it didn't, didn't make me rich. <laughs> to say the least, not rich. And um, now, through just divine uh, appointment, I have met a wonderful man that I live with. And he's sharing his, his home in the casita, and we really feel like it was like we were brought together. Both of us feel that way. And it, it was very, it's very magical. And I, I feel like, ah, oh, yeah, finally, I've got some place, I've got not just some place to live, but some place to really be. And now with creating a community in the park, casita park, I have a whole new project for my life, you know? It's like, I feel like, in a way, I used to really struggle with not get not having work and you know keep that thing going, that movement going, because I really love to work. Um, but now I'm kind of like starting to get it that it's <laughs> nice to not have a lot of work and not have to struggle to make a living. And um, so I, so I love to cook and uh, clean. I'm, I'm just an old school person. I'm not a I'm not the I'm not the modern day computer girl. I just and I'm an artist and I'm getting to really express myself in that in those areas that are really important to me. Well, I came, I came in 2017 to Colorado, June, so be five years, and I've been in my place in Casita Park uh, with my my partner since um, June of last year. So it's interesting, June happens. A lot of things happen for me in June. It feels so good to have a home. And they who, they who don't have homes like I've been through, um, they know how it feels. Um, there's nothing like having your own bed and a kitchen. <laughs> Very, I, I, you know, for me, I feel like I live in a, a castle right now. And it's just a little mobile home in Casita Park. But... Um, I think that it was good that I went through the things that I've gone through in my life that brought me here, you know. And uh, I did live in Colorado for four, four years when I was a kid, in Denver and Broomfield. And when I left, it was interesting, I had a thought. Um, I was going in sixth grade. I had a thought, I'm going to come back here. And I did. <laughs> it took a long time, but here I am. And I love it. In a way, I, I kind of miss the ocean and stuff, but I don't. I have the ocean is in the sky, for me here. The sky is my ocean, and um, <clears throat> I've always loved co uh, the clouds and the, the sun and you know all that. I remember when I was a little kid living in, especially Broomfield, we'd go lie down in what we called the prairie, and watch the clouds and. When I, and when I lived in Broomfield, it was not developed, so it was still a farm town, mm -hmm. which is real cool. I like to be where it's quiet. I mean, beyond quiet, silent. 
It's very nice to be out here in the silence. I feel almost like um, I found my tribe here. I let my hair grow out because there were a lot of other ladies who were, you know, of, of my age group that just looked beautiful that way. So it helped me to accept my age and to, like, relax into it. And um, the more I just, like, trust in, in God and spirit, the easier things are for me. If I, I know what I'd like, you know, I'd love to have this and that, but um, it, as long as I accept the things that I do have and the way life is, and I'm grateful, I think gratitude is a big part of just opening up things for me, being grateful for what I do have. Oh, and now I have a cat. Um, I had a parrot for 35 years, and um, he died when he was 70. Oh, this is interesting. I just flashed on that. So I, I, I didn't have children. So for me to have an animal is really kind of important. And I went for a long, long time without any animals. And uh, a friend uh, talked me into going down to the soft spot in Alamosa and check out the kitties. And, <laughs> and there she was. My I like black cats, so I got my, I got my daughter. <laughs> um, I've had dogs and parrot and... Now I have finally have the cat, and I think it's really wonderful. It's like it, it, I get to express my motherly part of me, you know, that nurturing. We don't have a lot of money, but at least uh, my partner, he's very um, talented, and he he uh, invents things and he builds things. So we can take upcycling materials and turn them into. We're starting with gardens for food. That's our main focus this year, you know, is to make sure that we come up. He's building a greenhouse right now. And um, because I think it's very important that we all can go walk outside and get food. <laughs> I just want to share that I really feel the mountains. I really feel the energy here. And I really feel a lot of beauty and a lot of people that are just really right on you know it's just this is like the most per I finally I got to come home I'm home finally California said I was in Santa Barbara and we're not home it was so much there's so much you know very rich and very poor and when I left there were 6,000 people on a waiting list for safe parking to sleep in your car and, you know, like I say, and I was really kind of, I was really hoping to have a home again. Um, I had been married and divorced and all that stuff. And, um, I, used, I put my stuff in storage. And I used to go to the storage unit and open the doors and just stand there and cry. And in the end, I opened those doors and gave it all away. People didn't want to pay money for it. I had nice stuff, too. So I just gave ninety percent of my my belongings go, were gone, and I just I think that that was the key. I had I had a vision that I had to do that, and it took me forever. It took me years to step up and finally say, okay. <laughs> I had a vision to pop, pack my suitcase and sit on on the curb. No, it wasn't. I didn't quite do that, but you know I had to leave and come home to Colorado. I think. We are really on the cutting edge of Colorado right now. We are about to really transform this place, community. You know, I, I see, I see a, a vision of, of a, new, a new world, the way we want to have it be, where people do care about each other, and we can have, we have a community, and we, you know. I just feel a lot of love here. You've been listening to Sawatch County Stories. Thank you to our guest, Alana Godwin, for sharing her story. This podcast is made possible in part through a generous Sawatch County sales tax grant. Music created by Lydia Schultz Sprouts and Rob Treefort with Golden Turtle Sound. Concept development by Maureen Ike Van Walligan with Dusty Dog Films, along with the staff of the Northern Sawatch County Library District. If you would like to share your story or have questions, email Eden at edenelderberry at nsclibrarydistrict.org 
or call the Sawatch Public Library at 719-655-2551. For new episodes, to read our blog, or to watch our YouTube channel, check out the Northern Sawatch County Library District website, nscld.colibraries.org.